I'm gonna give you five of the best exercises that you can use to develop speed as a running back, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dan Miller from Garagestrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a freak athlete, you wanna learn how to become a better coach, you wanna take knowledge and apply it to improve your performance, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. One of the worst feelings as a running back is knowing that you have a clear edge. You've got the corner, you've got the edge, and you can't get to that edge. You can't make the play. You can't get around the corner and beat that linebacker to the sideline and take it to the house. And that's one of the big key factors that separates the elite running backs from those run of the mill running backs. The elite running backs know how to utilize acceleration. They know how to use the drive phase of sprint they know how to hit that next gear because they're able to accelerate through those different positions. And then another key factor is that running backs that do have that top end speed and that are elite, they also tend to be the running backs that can handle big time collision. They can handle heavier opponents pulling on them. Think about somebody like Derrick Henry. He's got that. Think about the best running backs of all time. They can get to the edge, right? They can handle big time collisions inside the box. And then finally, they are also the same guys that can cut on a dime. They can juke an individual, get out of that cut and accelerate very, very rapidly. And that's that key component here. When we're trying to build speed for running backs, we've got to acknowledge that one, you've got to be able to hit the hole very, very quickly. And if you make contact, you've got to be able to get out of that contact collision. Two, you've got to be able to get the edge. You've got to have the speed from a lateral position and then hit the gas pedal when you get around that corner. And then finally, you've got to be able to cut on a dime. So these are some key components behind training running backs, behind developing the best running backs possible. And so now we're going to go into those top five exercises that are going to help you develop speed as an elite running back. Coming at that number five spot, we have an exercise that we created called the banded single leg start. And so you're going to get into a unilateral position in about a quarter squat. And you're going to have a band and you can use an auditory command. So you could have your coach go if you want or you can just do reps upon reps. But the whole key factor here is to improve the first step. If we're loaded with that band, now we're a little bit more engaged with our trunk. We've got to have that dynamic trunk control triggered right off the bat. We lead with that first step, we get onto the box and we squeeze isometrically. We have an isometric muscular action to control that feeling. When we're doing the single leg banded starts, we're gonna learn how to utilize that first step. And that's gonna be very, very, similar to if we're running a counter. It's going to be very similar if we're running a dive. All of a sudden, you can hit that hole very, very quickly because you learn how to engage your trunk on that first step. That's a key factor here with the single leg start, with the banded starts. When we're doing the banded starts, you get forward onto that box. You're in the acceleration phase. You're in the drive phase. You've got that really positive shin angle and you're driving forward and you're holding that band, feeling every single muscular action that you have in your entire body engage so that you can hit that hole faster. I recommend doing this two to three days a week, especially on your leg days or your explosive plyometric days. It's going to help you become a better athlete. It's going to help you as a running back hit the hole a little bit quicker. Coming in at that number four spot, we've got the bent knee glute ham. This is an exercise that I love. It's very similar to a Nordic hamstring curl, which is also another great exercise if you want to improve your speed as a running back. But when we're doing the bent knee glute ham, you're going to be targeting the lower back a little bit more. So you're going to be engaging the trunk. We're also going to be smashing our hamstrings, okay? Just absolutely annihilating our hamstrings. And if we're utilizing a dumbbell or even a barbell on our back, you're gonna have more tension at the top position. So you're gonna have a greater range of motion because your knees are bent. And most of the time when we're thinking about hip extension and we're sprinting, a lot of the time we're in a bent knee position, okay? When we're accelerating. And so this is a really good exercise to engage and to train your hamstrings how to operate and how to get out of cuts a little bit quicker. Our hamstrings and our quads and our glutes are gonna fire together and it's gonna create a really, really rapid rate of acceleration. I recommend doing bent knee glute hams once or twice a week. You can do three to four sets of 12 to 15 reps. Coming at that number three spot, 
when we think about really, really fast running backs. I like to use one of our own, Nicholas Singleton. He is one of the highest recruited running backs in the country. He's been offered by Alabama, Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, all of these top schools, okay? And one of those key factors that Nicholas has is he tends to be a little bit stiff. He's just a little bit more tightly wound than most people, but he still has pretty decent mobility. He still has good hip mobility. He can get into a very deep position with a snatch. He can get into a very deep position when he catches his cleans, when he's doing front squats, when he's back squatting, when he's doing single leg work. And that's one of the key components behind Nicholas's rise is that he's mobile, okay? He's mobile, he's explosive, and he can cut on a dime because he's more mobile. And so what we like to utilize and what we've utilized to develop Nicholas is a two box clean. So we might go off of one box, but we might also go off of two boxes. Now he's in that position where he has to accelerate a large amount of weight very, very, very quickly. Then he has to catch that deep into the hole in a very mobile position. He has to absorb that energy and then rapidly get out of the hole. What does this tell us? One, it's very similar. That first pull is very similar to your first two to three steps when you're trying to hit the hole. Two, when you're absorbing that energy, it's very similar to getting hit by a lineman, by a linebacker. Three, you stand up and you control that hit. You control that weight. You control that energy and you're fast. And on top of that, you're in a very mobile position. So think about that. We're taking the weight room and we're applying it directly over to the field. We're taking exercises that we can use in the weight room and directly apply it to the field through acceleration, through mobility, through strength work. And that's what has made Nicholas one of the best recruits in the country. He's a top 30 recruit because of his ability to accelerate rapidly, to hit positions in a crisp manner, and to get out of them as quickly as possible. I recommend doing two box cleans once or twice a week. Slowly build up, slowly add weight, make sure your technique's nice and good, and make sure you're making good hip contact. That's gonna be a key component behind acceleration for speed. That number two exercise that I love to utilize for speed-based training, specifically for running backs, is a single leg squat that is more importantly focused on stability and it's focused on a good positive rhythm. It doesn't have to be absurdly heavy. It can be very, very stable. And the reason why single leg squats are so effective is because we're in a unilateral position. Running backs are almost always in a unilateral position. Okay, on top of that, we're smashing the posterior chain. So we're gonna be targeting the hamstrings, the glutes, even the quads a little bit. I know that's anterior, but we're gonna be targeting the key muscle groups that are focused on acceleration, on the drive phase, on being fast, on cutting rapidly out of different positions. So we're in a single leg position. We also have to have that good dynamic trunk control. Okay, that's gonna help us juke somebody a little bit more effectively from a very deep joint angle. Think about Barry Sanders hitting a cut rapidly and getting out of that cut while his trunk is very, very stable, but his hips and quads and legs are moving all over the place. The reason why Barry Sanders was so good is because of his dynamic trunk control. He could juke very, very well. And single leg squats that are very stable, very rhythmic, can go a very long way because now we train the athlete over long periods of time inside each set how to control their trunk, how to recruit their trunk in conjunction with their hamstrings and with their glutes, and how to optimize their performance to carry it directly over to the football field. This is a key exercise to developing speed for running backs. I recommend doing the single leg squats nice and easy. I would say once a week for about five sets of five reps on each leg. Now, before we get into that number one exercise for speed-based training for running backs, if you need help and you're sitting there going, I want something that's gonna help me get faster. I wanna learn how I can apply the weight room directly over to the gridiron. I wanna learn how I can cut more effectively. I wanna learn how I can juke and then take it to the house. We have a program designed specifically for you. We have a how to get faster running backs base strength training program and an agile and hostile program that you can utilize today. You can click on the link down below. You could head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our training program that we designed specifically to increase speed and agility 
for running backs. Finally, that number one exercise. I love this exercise because of numerous different factors here. It's a quiz jump into single leg mini hurdle bounds, okay? And so this is a mouthful, but it's an easy exercise, but we're gonna start in a quiz start, okay? We're gonna have that back knee on a pad. We're gonna have our back foot. Our back foot has to be up, back foot up. A lot of athletes love to put the back foot down. Back foot has to be up. We're leading with that front foot in a very deep position. It's gonna emulate the drive phase. It's gonna emulate acceleration. It's gonna emulate cutting. We're gonna lead with that front foot. We're gonna pull from the hamstrings and the glutes. We're gonna jump and drive over that first mini hurdle and then we're gonna cycle nice and fluidly, nice and rhythmically, okay? This is something that I've utilized with Cooper Lutz, one of the starting running backs at Syracuse, an athlete who's taken it to the house against Notre Dame. He's a running back that has very, very good top end speed. He has very good mobility. He's hit power snatches for 110 kilos off of two boxes, but he's capable of hitting these quiz jumps into the mini hurdle hops as though he's a rabbit, right? And that carries over really well to that top end speed. And because of the depth of the quiz jump, it also carries over to cutting extremely well. So now if you're a running back who struggles with cutting, they struggle with hitting that top end speed, we can utilize this exercise and it's gonna help you develop that top end speed and that unilateral stability. That's another key factor. Do both legs and train that weak leg first. And now you can see, all right, my left leg almost feels dead when I'm doing this. When I personally do it, my right leg feels dead. But if I can train that over and over again, that's gonna help iron out that inefficiency. And now I'm gonna be able to cut from both sides. That's one factor that I've learned with running backs is that a lot of running backs will only hit a jump cut to one specific side. But as you climb up the ranks in football, you start to give that away. You, you start to have linebackers that can see, like, I know he's only gonna cut to this side because that's his strong side. You're not gonna be able to juke them because they've studied film, they've seen what you do. So now, when you train both sides, they don't know which side you're gonna cut to. If you're hitting a big jump cut, they don't know. They have no idea because you're that explosive from both legs. So I recommend doing this once a week for about six to seven sets on each leg, and you can do that quiz jump and to four mini hurdle bounce. Again, if you need help with developing a strength-based program, it's gonna help you become a faster running back. It's gonna help you dominate on the gridiron. Click on the link down below. You can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our How to Get Faster and Agile and Hostile strength training program that we designed specifically to improve speed-based training for running backs. If you want more content around speed-based training, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.